Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to Glendale Heights United Methodist Church on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. It is good to be in worship in the house of the Lord today. And I extend a welcome to everyone, and especially to our visitor, Bonnie, this morning. And hello to those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live. And as always, I invite you to let us know you're with us by entering something in the comments. And also enter your prayer request so that we can uh, deal with those later on in the service. I want to say thanks um, to everyone today for your generosity over the years and your apportionment giving. Your apportionment giving funds, one of the things that it does is it funds the Golden Cross Award. And that is a special fund for laypersons in the conference that are under um, undue... Uh, burdens from medical bills and uh, through no fault of their own and um, we applied for Tommy uh, recently and he was awarded a nice grant that will uh, help pay for his cataract surgery coming up so um, we we give thanks to the conference for their foresight and setting up that grant and to you and to all the churches that faithfully pay their apportionments and in order to uh, fund services like the Golden Cross grant um, I think uh, Tom Werner has an announcement he wants to make. I just want to mention, we are going to have a little get-together on the 22nd of June morning, Saturday morning around 10 o'clock, to um, finish up our discussion on the questions on transformational ministries. So there's been a, some discussion with some people, and we need to go over some things in there and report back to Kelly, right? Yeah. So by the 1st of August, so that's our deadline. So anyway, 22nd, 10 o'clock. Thank you. So July 22nd, that's a Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. We'll meet here to um, discuss the options that are before us and with the goal of uh, reporting back to or meeting again with uh, Kelly and Brian by or close to August 1st. I encourage you to stay focused on the options that are before us and be very focused on listening for the voice of the Spirit. I invite you now to begin preparing for worship as we sit comfortably in an open and upright posture so that we can breathe deeply Begin emptying our hearts and minds of distracting feelings and thoughts. Let us be wholehearted in our worship and praise of the God who comes alongside us and carries our burdens.
invite you to please rise in body or in spirit as we join together in the call to worship. Come in and find some rest. We need that rest, for we are weary. Come in and discover peace. We need peace, for our spirits are weighed down. Our Lord is here, waiting for you. Let us worship our God, who brings us rest and peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the Lord of rest and peace. Open our hearts to you this day that we may hear your words of inspiration and healing. Guide our spirits as we seek to live out your redeeming and reconciling love. These things we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us join now in our opening hymn, number 145. seated. It is a new day, and we have new joys and new concerns uh, to bring before God today. Um, it was very sad to read the news this past week um, here in Durham, the shootings of a five-year-old and a 15-year-old, and uh, things like that that just, just continue to happen, and that that burdens our hearts and hopefully will move us to uh, be in prayer about how we can be part of a solution to those kinds of things going on in our community. I wonder if you have other joys or concerns that you would lift up today. Linda? Very sorry to hear that, Glenda. So prayers for Shirley Spaulding, who has had a massive stroke and is under hospice care at Hawk. Other joys or concerns. We are concerned about the extreme heat uh, that we're facing, um, not only here in Durham, but around the world. And believe it or not, I, I, if I read the statistic correctly, I believe it said that more people die from heat-related illnesses than from cold or um, even hurricanes. 
So that, that kind of surprised me to find out the, the extent of uh, the danger of, of um, extreme heat. Pam. So prayers for the family of uh, Emily Shugart. Uh, her aunt passed away from ALS. It's a joy. Uh, Tommy is giving thanks for everything that so many of y'all have done to help him um, with his medical expenses and the, the long recovery from his episode last year before Thanksgiving. Um, but you ain't heavy. You're our brother. Still, still dealing with it, and, and more to come. More to come. But we got gotcha. you. Monica. Oh, Leonard's birthday was this past Friday. A happy birthday to Leonard. Amen. May the Lord protect and keep Leonard for many more years as a good husband and father and child of God. If there are no other prayers that you would offer, let us gather all these up and go to God. Lord of steadfast love and mercy, you have been our help in ages past, and you are our hope for years to come. We gather this morning filled with gratitude for all that has gone before, and yet a little uneasy and uncertain as we try to discern our next steps forward in faith under the guidance and discipline of your Holy Spirit. Break through the doubts and fears that weigh us down and the striving and strategizing that wears us out and lead us into your peaceful presence. As we stand yoked to you in solidarity with the suffering of the world, may your will for us be made clear. We pray always that we would be like you, people of prayerful compassion, ready to love mercy and do justice, so that none would bear undue burdens and none would bear any burden alone. We lift up to you the prayers of our hearts now for those who are still burdened, for those who are seeking healing, for those who mourn, for those who are in need within the church, in our community, and around the world. And we know that there are many prayers this morning that remain unspoken. And we trust that you hear those prayers as well and that you are already providing what is needed in all those situations. We rejoice, Lord Christ, that in your tender mercies you shoulder our burdens and you lift our heavy hearts. Give us the strength to carry one another as you have carried us. And we pray now as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to eight, page 857 for our responsive reading. It's coming from Psalm 145, verses 8 to 21. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and bounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. Until to make known to all people your mighty deeds. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. The Lord upholds all who are fallen. And raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. And you give them their food in due season. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. All the Lord's ways are just. The Lord is near to all who call. To all who call upon the Lord in truth. 
the Lord fulfills the desire of all the faithful. And hears their cry and saves them. All who love the Lord, the Lord perseveres. All the wicked, the Lord restores. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name. Our gospel lesson comes from Matthew chapter 11, 16 to 19, and 25 to 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It's like the children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Then he began to reproach the uh, the cities in which most of their deeds of power have been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Cherezin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more Tarble for Tyre and Sidon than for you, and you, Capernaum. Will you not, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you'll be brought down to Hades. For the deeds of power done in you have been done in Sodom. It would have remained until this day. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it would be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God to see how far Tommy has come since last Thanksgiving up here without even his, his walker. It is an amazing thing. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Once upon a time, there was an old grandfather who decided he wanted to travel to the next town. So he took his grandson and set him up on his donkey, and they started out for the next town. As they were going along, 
grandfather heard somebody say, huh, look at that old man. Suffering on his feet while the strong young boy rides the donkey. So they trade places. And the grandfather rides the donkey while the boy walks. And as they're going along, grandfather hears somebody else say, would you look at that perfectly healthy man making that poor boy suffer by walking? Can you believe it? So the boy gets on the donkey with his grandfather, and they both ride. Until someone says, look at those brutes making that poor donkey suffer with such a load. So they both get off and walk. Until they hear someone say, what a waste, a perfectly good donkey not being used. As they approach the town, someone says, would you look at that? Here comes a young boy with an old man carrying a donkey. <laughs> you ever feel like that grandfather? We live in a world full of expectations, full of judgment of all kinds, social, political, religious, cultural. And we're being expected to respond in all sorts of different ways. And we can end up burdened with guilt, with self-blame, with anxiety, and we can end up just struggling. And we can wear ourselves out struggling with all the expectations, bending over backwards, trying to accommodate, trying to find the one right way, the one right thing to do, or even forcefully fighting back to defend our position. Like the old man, we shift the load every which way until we end up more burdened than ever. And like the little children in the scripture lesson for today, we can no longer tell when to dance and when to cry. We're in good company. That scripture lesson for today reminds us that John the Baptist neither ate nor drank, and folks gave him a hard time, while Jesus was all the time eating and drinking, and they gave him a hard time too. Jesus even came to save Israel and was rejected by the very priest of Israel for breaking their rules. No one understood John's asceticism or Jesus's hospitality. So when Jesus addresses the crowd, he says they're like children who are getting it wrong. And he's frustrated at, at being misunderstood but he's also speaking with deep empathy. Jesus is recognizing that they have been oppressed and formed by the Roman Empire, the, the culture of uh, the, the imperial culture of the Romans, and they've been oppressed and formed by some corruptions of religion in ways that keep them from being able to see the kingdom of God and to notice the spirit of God moving among them. And then Jesus prays a prayer that reminds us that we have no capacity of our own to understand God, that knowledge of God is a gift of grace, and that gift of grace is available through Jesus. Now, where John the Baptist was rather strident in warning folks to repent so that they could avoid God's judgment for accommodating to the ways of empire and corrupt religion, Jesus adds this dimension of radical and unbelievable and freeing grace without denying the need for repentance to turn away from those ways. Jesus extends the gracious invitation to come to him and rest, and to exchange the yoke of worldliness, the yoke of the Roman Empire, and the yoke even of their own religious zeal for his yoke, the yoke of gentle, compassionate and humble ways of working and being that are appropriate for the children of God's kingdom, ways that take into account the suffering of the world. Come to me and rest, 
seems odd, like, a, like an odd invitation, when, when earlier Jesus himself has said that the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life. We know that kingdom work is not easy. The kingdom does not come easily just because we pray it every Sunday or hopefully every day. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's not easy work. So what Jesus is offering is a rest from inappropriate work and inappropriate expectations that come from the social and political or religious structures that are outside God's kingdom. And he's offering a rest from work and expectations that don't take into account the suffering of the world. He's telling us that working yoked to him, to Jesus, offers the ease of grace. So if you're feeling tired and burdened, then maybe it's a good time to ask, which yoke are you wearing? We don't have all the answers. We can't predict all the outcomes. We can't always see the big picture. But getting it right all the time and trying to please everybody is impossible, and it's a pursuit that will wear us out. And so will standing in judgment of others or trying to do God's job for God. For sure, it's hard to see where God's new energy is breaking in when you've been under another yoke. But it is important if we call ourselves followers of Jesus. It's important for us to look for it and to learn from Jesus what it looks like. And it will be recognizable as love, mercy, and justice, standing in solidarity with the suffering of the world. Jesus invites us to come to him, to lay down our burdens of power, wealth, and popularity, and self-sufficiency, those things that we have been influenced to value that are not of God's kingdom. Jesus invites us to let go of the burden of activism, of the need to do something. He invites us to let go of external rules, of trying to please others, and to just stand next to him so that you can see what Jesus sees. Jesus invites us to be ready to dance when dancing is called for and to mourn when mourning is called for. Jesus invites us to pay attention to the moment and to act according to the ways of Jesus. I wonder what it would be like in the world or in the church if we wholeheartedly accepted this gracious invitation of Jesus. It might look like the end of power struggles and personality cults. It might look like more interdependence. It might look like mutual sharing of resources. It might look like sharing the work so that no one is left alone in sickness, in suffering, or in hardship. What if, instead of standing apart and judging what the old man did with his donkey, the people criticizing him along the way had loaned him a second donkey, or at least offered him and the boy and the donkey some water in the shade as they made their way along their journey? What if by listening to all those other voices, the grandfather and the boy missed out on something important about the journey? or they never arrived at their destination at all? Or what if all along the grandfather had a plan for taking turns riding the donkey and resting the donkey, but nobody bothered to ask? Brothers and sisters, Jesus offers us relief from this kind of strain and stress, from striving after things that never satisfy. He offers us relief from never dancing when it's time to dance and mourning when it's time to mourn. Jesus invites us to put down the donkey and to shift the load. He invites us to put on the yoke that fits 
and to do what is in step with God's love and justice. And then we can rest easy, trusting that we are on the path that God wants us to be on. Amen. Why don't we take a couple of moments to just sit in silence before we continue uh, to ponder some of those questions, some of those thoughts, to ponder that image of the old man and his grandson and the donkey, and to ponder that image of not knowing when to dance and when to mourn. and ask for God's help in understanding what we see. Amen. And sometimes it just works out without a whole lot of planning that the hymn of response is right on target. I invite you to please join, uh, please stand in body or in spirit and join together as we sing hymn number 707. <laughs> Join together in the affirmation of faith found on page 881 in your hymnals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
seated. And the scriptures tell us that each of us must give as we have made up our mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I invite the ushers to come forward as we return to God, God's tithes and offerings. As you have received each one of us, O Lord, receive also these gifts that we offer to you so that your love may be made known through ministries of peace, hope, and justice, and all may be relieved of the burdens of poverty, sickness, and oppression. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we join together in our sending hymn, number 469.
brothers and sisters, go forth from this place, hopefully with your burden a little bit lighter than when you came walking in. And when you go out from this place, do what you can to make someone else's burden a little lighter after the example of Jesus Christ. So go in peace with the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the companionship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.